thank you for bearing uh, with us uh, so far. And um, today I'm going to present our latest work from uh, uh, Parisha on um, the effect of incentives on the recognition of uh, uh, scientific information and misinformation. And um, why specifically scientific and misinformation? Well, basically we think that um, misinformation about science has, uh, it's an ever-changing phenomenon. It evolves in, in such a fashion, such a uh, manner that it's uh, kind of difficult to track. And uh, it requires also oftentimes uh, technical knowledge that is not always available to lay audiences. Um, I'm giving you here an example, recent uh, publication by um, Cohen and colleagues, uh, which basically tracked the uh, frequency of uh, claims uh, concerning climate change throughout the last 20 years. And basically this nicely displays how uh, the kind of counter arguments uh, towards uh, the existence or the, uh, the harm of climate change uh, kind of change, kind of shift throughout through time, depending on the kind of the narrative that uh, various uh, agents or parties involved into this uh, discourse uh, change. So there's uh, there's a ever going evolution in the kind of uh, the way we talk about science, and uh, it takes time to correct this information. Not only that, we also know that uh, social media is pretty bad at dealing with this information. Uh, here's just one example. We see uh, that uh, in 2020, uh, the height of the COVID pandemic craze, uh, uh, we basically had uh, only 16% of uh, uh, COVID disinformation that was actually fact-checked to be removed or labeled uh, by, by Facebook. So this is a uh, really cogent um, topic. And there's a big problem into how can uh, we actually act effectively and swiftly in order to counteract it. So we know that we can somehow rely on experts and there's like networks, websites that actually deal with uh, misinformation about health related issues, about climate. But is there any way we can actually give tools uh, to empower users themselves. So that's what we uh, kind of set out to test. And we uh, originally uh, focused on two types of interventions. One, which was more related as um, an informational intervention, which we tried to provide users with skills, with uh, tools uh, to uh, look out for information related to, to content. And uh, we specifically focused on the the work by the uh, uh, research team in Stanford, we'll, we'll see a presentation uh, later on by Joel, which basically tracked uh, fact checkers and kind of summarized a series of strategies on how to, uh, how to actually spot false information. And two of these strategies that we actually provided to participants were lateral reading, which is basically the idea of uh, browsing through different windows or so opening new tabs on your uh, search and uh, your browser and uh, to look for information that is not contained on the source that you're actually evaluating. And uh, click, re click restraint, which is basically the idea that when you're looking for uh, results on a search, search engine, you shouldn't stop at the first results, but rather kind of get a hold on the information neighborhood. So how are actually uh, different websites talking about the topic? And uh, the second approach instead that we tried to, to use was to uh, incentivize uh, participants to actually pay attention and uh, increase motivation into the actual evaluation of the content they were engaging with. Um, and following this reasoning, we tried to use the stronger incentives you could think of, also uh, something that made economists happy, which is you know, money. And uh, so we kind of use this very strong benchmark to test uh, whether actual incentives were uh, able to somehow increase the evaluation, the, the accuracy of evaluation of, of users. And um, we did so by 
uh, offering to double their payments of participants in their experiment if their evaluation turned out to be correct. So um, we tried to test this in an environment which we kind of control. We kind of replicated a series of Facebook posts from original content, like not, not original content, sorry, uh, uh, actual true content taken from browsing the internet, and um, which uh, we systematically varied in terms of, uh, so we first, of all, like participants had, could browse uh, the post, could actually uh, explore the links, they could actually interact with it, link, uh, uh, open the links to the article, open the link to the web page uh, containing the article, the Facebook page, so on and so forth. And then whenever they wanted at their own self base, uh, they could actually rate the validity, the scientific validity of the post. And so as I was mentioning, these posts varied systematically. We actually tested uh, various scientific topics from climate change to the COVID pandemic to health and nutrition. Of course, we also uh, varied the, sorry, this perhaps we can just uh, minimize, okay. Uh, the, the validity of the uh, scientific content. And we specifically focused um, for this for this experiment, we specifically focus on content from sources that participants weren't familiar with. Uh, but the reasoning that uh, a lot of content actually comes from sponsored advertisement on social media, and uh, you know, think about like uh, health and uh, nutrition pills, uh, for instance, and that uh, this kind of content is uh, harder to vet compared, you know, to with experience and uh, and previous knowledge. So uh, this is kind of this, these findings were condensed in this uh, paper, which was published earlier on this month. And uh, basically what we found was that providing in this kind of information was uh, turned out to be successful in, in the sense that users actually increase uh, the, the use of like, uh, of like uh, search engines and actually the proper use of search engines. Uh, even though we couldn't convince everyone, which is kind of the main limitation of like displaying interventions in a matter of few seconds. But still, uh, what we also observed was that use of these techniques actually is strongly correlated with performance, with evaluation. And uh, on a scale from one to six, as I showed you in the previous slide, we had an, ex an increase of almost half a point. And uh, similarly, we actually found uh, that also offering incentives, uh, monetary incentives also had uh, a boost in performance uh, uh, by a third of a point. So, and so we kind of also observed that these two approaches were uh, kind of cumulative in a sense that uh, if uh, information interventions actually increase the, uh, the use of techniques, incentives in, on their own also uh, actually uh, had something else to add to the, um, to the search of, of, of users, of participants. So um, we, we did find so positive effects of both of these interventions, uh, but we also realized that monetary incentives are not uh, an easily scalable intervention. You're not going to pay users on social media, right? I mean, as David Rand presented earlier, we could think of use selections of users for crowdsourcing. And in that case, we probably monetary incentives would be a good way to increase the accuracy of evaluation. But in general, we thought, is there any other way uh, we can use incentives that still are effective in uh, increasing evaluation of uh, scientific or uh, uh, false uh, scientific content uh, that is more scalable than money? So that's what we set out to do. And um, we basically tried two types of, uh, of incentives. Or the first one is social responsibility. And basically the idea is that we want to make participants feel socially responsible for their actions in a sense that making them aware that their actions will be seen by others as it happens when you're sharing content on social media and that this information might be used by others, which is basically what we told them. So uh, this is actually an extension from a previous uh, experiment, not, not in our team, but uh, that similarly kind of provided the information from 
uh, a set of uh, participants to another sort of aggregator participant, which basically collected all this information and made a judgment based on that. So we basically explicitly told participants the following. So um, your response will help other participants recognize whether the post is scientifically valid or not. And we will show your, your evaluation to other prolific participants in a subsequent study. And your response will inform their decision. So basically, uh, we made them uh, kind of very self-aware of their behavior and of the importance of their actions. So uh, this was the first non-monetary incentive. And uh, the second one is something that we, I mean, I don't know, it happens to me quite a lot to observe on social media, which is like putting uh, participants up to a challenge. So um, I don't know, can you, can you read? Yes, of course. So this is the kind of idea that we try to, uh, we ask the participants to kind of solve some task and we actually provide uh, him or her with uh, a, like statistics of how part previous participants performed, and um, and so we, we we reason here that uh, kind of social um, your, your social image or self image might be affected by your, your comparison with others, right? And um, I actually didn't even try to test this. Let's solve this. But if you have an answer, tell me. Uh, so this is basically what we told. So we asked simply, uh, we, we told them simply that in a previous study, seven out of 10 participants uh, were able to answer correctly in the task. And uh, then what about you? Okay, so um, so this is, uh, this is what uh, basically the experiment looked like. We collected, uh, this is actually data from Monday. So freshly baked, uh, 4,000 uh, UK uh, residents on the, on the online uh, platform Prolific. And we displayed uh, each participant with one Facebook post. We actually had uh, 10 Facebook posts uh, balanced for a series of characteristics from familiarity to surprisingness and, uh, and so on and so forth. And basically participants were uh, like, looked at the post and gave their evaluation. On average, uh, it took around a minute to, to give the response. Some people took three seconds, uh, some people 25 minutes. And uh, so there's a lot of variability. And uh, importantly, this, uh, this task wasn't that easy in the sense that we got uh, an average performance of like uh, around 60% people getting it right. And uh, compared to the scale one to six, we had like an average of 3.9. And you, you can think of like 3.5 as the middle point. So kind of the, a random response on average would be around 3.5. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, we are happy to, to actually replicate most of the findings we had in the previous study, which is we do find for instance that people reporting but checking techniques actually have better performance uh, around the same amount of increase in terms of uh, accuracy in the ratings. Uh, and uh, also, we also know that uh, monetary incentives are still good at what they do. So we do observe uh, an increase in the, in the ratings that is very comparable to the previous study. Now, but what about the non-monetary incentives, right? So we have sort of a mixed bag. Actually, here what we this is what we get. This is kind of the uh, these are bootstrap averages in each uh, in each condition. The scores are uh, from one to six, but you can see only the top part. And uh, what we observe is that uh, <coughs> social responsibility does not significantly increase um, the accuracy. But self-image, uh, so the comparison of uh, with others actually did does uh, slightly but significantly increase uh, accuracy. Uh, this is actually the opposite of what I would have uh, predicted. Uh, but I like to be proven wrong. Joking, I'm really I'm really pissed off at this. But uh, <laughs> no, this is actually we're still surprised by this, and actually we try to figure out. Uh, what was going on here. And so we, we have like a sort of uh, set of uh, different measures. So first of all, uh, 
this is actually what we find. We find that uh, self-image um, kind of comparison with others does slightly increase um, performance, and so does uh, so do monetary incentives like in an increasing manner. And also, generally speaking, this uh, kind of relationship is uh, stable in terms of like how much time people spend on the task and how. Uh, how solid, the, how extreme the responses are. It's like people answering four on a one to six scale are uh, probably erring to the side of caution compared to people who are answering six. And uh, the more we move to the right in these three conditions, the more extreme the answers are. Okay, so we try to figure out what kind of things happen here. And um, we, we thought perhaps, is there any, Actually, the use of these sort of incentives does it change? Does change the uh, the use of search engine? Does use, does change the the way people actually use search engine? And um, we do find no difference. Now, like if we could just uh, there's no way to hide this, right? Whatever. Okay. Yeah, have a good chat, and then that's what I. Did. We can move it, I think. Right? Yes, but uh, the green on the green field, you should be able to. Is there to the other screen? Okay. Oh wait. On the green. Yes. Then you can move it to the other screen. Yeah. No, there's no other screen. That's the problem. Well, okay. I'll I'll keep it here. I keep it down here. <laughs> All right. Rid of it by clicking the chat. No, I, I yeah. And then, and then clicking the cross, like on the right. That's a, yes. That one, and then it disappeared. Let's see if that. Okay. Well. Apparently no. Okay. <laughs> we'll try. We'll try. <laughs> Whatever, I, I, think, I think you can see the label, so that's fine. So this is basically, this is a race chart. Basically represents the portion of people who report having a search on different websites. So they actually remember participants could actually click on the post and search for different, uh, for different information on different websites. And uh, so basically here we have like, we report how many people did what. And so we have, for instance, around 15 people actually clicking on the article and looking whether the article actually was, uh, what, what, what it was the article about. And uh, this is a control condition, so no incentive is displayed. And the two red bars, the, um, the light red basically represents uh, the lateral reading portion. So the amount of people actually looked up for information on different websites and specifically on, uh, on search engines. And the, the dark red one instead represents the amount of people actually uh, did, did not stop at first results. And uh, so this is uh, how many people did this in control condition. And you observe that if you look at the same results in different conditions, this is social responsibility, this is self image, basically it doesn't change. So we do know that people, there might like, there's been like a change in performance, but this is not attributable to the, uh, to the actual behavior on the website. The only change we observe, and this is again a replication for the previous study, is the uh, use of monetary incentives, which apparently actually makes people um, makes, makes people want to go to look for information on, on Google. Uh, no figure. Um, so this was a very brief presentation, but uh, it's uh, still ongoing, but I'd be very happy to have like a, <coughs> Uh, fruitful uh, Q and A with you on this. So just to summarize what we found, um, we get that uh, we see that monetary bonuses are still the most effective intervention that we could think of and we could test, um, and they do a very effective work at improving the actual you know users' uh, attention motivation, arguably in in detecting scientific uh, quality of information. Uh, but also asking participants if they're up to a challenge uh, seems to also have a positive effect. And uh, although to a lesser extent than uh, monetary incentives. We, uh, again, uh, we could not find explicitly, and I, I actually forgot to say this, this is kind of an important point. Uh, we also had like a series of uh, psychological questionnaires trying to back up and try to figure out what kind of uh, effect was kind of explaining, but the correlation were nil. So like we had like social comparison scale and uh, did not correlate with the actual accuracy in the task. So 
we are on a blank point here and be curious to hear some inputs. And um, finally, we also find that, now let me just move this on top, that's better. Uh, we also find that basically social responsibility intervention uh, did not significantly increase the uh, accuracy of evaluations of users. So now this might be to various reasons as for any no result. Uh, I'd like to think that perhaps we weren't as convincing enough into uh, eliciting responsibility, but this is what we found. So this is basically uh, our findings for today. And uh, with that, I would like to thank the, the whole meeting, the whole team who basically worked on this, uh, this project, Piero Ronzani, uh, Tiffany Morizzo, uh, Simone, and Carlo here, and Matteo Motterli. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Polko. So, um, well, should we take this screen? I can just take it off. Stop sharing and then we can see. Um, Stefan has a question. Please, Stefan. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I was wondering what the results mean that the fact that incentives actually work, because in, in the deep icing, literature address this idea of the lost pilot effect. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't make, uh, help if you, I don't know, incentivize people if they don't know what they're doing. They're just going to do it more convinced um, more, with more effort uh, for better or worse. But you're showing um, people do perform better, which kind of means that they have the knowledge available, but they're not using it. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering how you, because on the other hand, telling them what they should be doing, like lateral reading, for example, also improves the performance. Yes. Yeah. And so it, so why are the two things working um, and they actually reinforce each other if you combine them as, as I understood. So I'm just wondering what this means for the question of what is actually the problem to begin with. Also in, in light of, of Benny Guggen Rand's work on, on um, yeah, just gi giving attention to, to accuracy, uh, but maybe more concrete in terms of recruiting the right kind of strategies to deal with information. Yeah, so that's a very deep question. And uh, so thanks, thanks, Stefan. Um, we actually are still in the process of figuring out exactly what kind of uh, underlying um, thoughts of participants are. Uh, but the idea here is that probably monetary incentives like tackle some processes that are kind of different from the ones that uh, you know, the informational intervention uh, tries to try to change. Uh, and it's true that it, it looks like so, so, somehow, somehow paradoxical that motivation in itself, like, sorry, incentives in, itself, in themselves are, are good enough to increase accuracy. It means that at least for part of the stimuli we tested, which doesn't mean the entirety of them, there is a good chance that users already know in their hearts, they, they know actually how to deal with the uh, sort of information they're, they're looking at. They just don't think it's worth the time or effort in the first place. Um, and that's something we, that's what, 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 what we actually thought in the beginning when we actually observed that people were actually engaging in using more search engines, even without any explicit recommendation to do so. But observing that there is still an increase in accuracy, even without any change in the search uh, of information outside the, the, study, the study page, that makes it even more puzzling. So it, it, is, it is clear that we're witnessing here, it's kind of different process, but um, we're kind of uncertain. So we, one thing that certainly we need to uh, figure out is also whether this is actually content specific, if there are specific kind of information that of information that is actually easier to retrieve from uh, for users, or if there's like uh, some uh, some sort of uh, rhetoric or uh, the way text is presented that gives away the validity of content. So that might be some uh, possible uh, directions to this. Don't know if I completely answered the question, but. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, John has a question. Um, I think Esther was first. Uh, um, oh yes. Okay. Let's let's stay with the online attendance and Esther. Yes, and then John. Okay. Thank you, um, Esther Blanco, the University of Innsbruck. So I was wondering. Um, 
these results of how the monetary incentives work and how they outperform some of the other measures could be related to the subject pool in particular that it's used. So the users in Prolific are in that platform to make money and potentially they might be willing to invest more time in tasks <coughs> in money making as opposed to in tasks that might be increasing their self-image or other potential mechanisms uh, or psychological mechanisms that could help generally. So have you perhaps given some thought about the external validity to other subject pools and perhaps um, considered experimental designs with other sets of subject pools to test for that? Yes, so thanks for your question. We definitely considering this. And um, we are definitely uh, like, cont like uh, contemplating uh, the idea of like testing this in a more um, naturalistic environment. Also, that's not the only issue with the prolific sample is that they're generally more well-educated than generous samples and uh, also different features. Uh, but returning to the specific problem of incentives. So yes, there is um, there's a specific, uh, uh, incentives of, of participants uh, to, to get paid for. And this is definitely true, but um, the, um, the idea of incentives in itself, it's not something that comes out of um, uh, online experimentation. And actually we do, we do actually find very similar results of different tasks, uh, like, you know, like in, in real life that actually follow up very nicely with incentives. We were actually concerned uh, that it, this could have been actually backfired in a sense that uh, people uh, incentives might have like demotivated users. That's, that's actually something that uh, actually also was, uh, has been measured, right? So I, I suspect, and, and there's, there's some research, I'm, I'm sure definitely uh, Piero knows more than I do on this. Um, but uh, there's some research showing that um, even if we, when we're dealing with uh, crowdsourcing uh, platforms like uh, Mechanical Turk or, uh, or Prolific, we are actually uh, kind of well covered in terms of the way the motivation of, of users in terms of like internal motivation. Uh, but let, let's actually have uh, Piero chime in because I think uh, he has a better answer than I have. Uh, yeah, just to just to follow up on what you were saying. So I think we were perfectly aware of this. Uh, um, you know, we, we actually thought um, thought it as a, as an opportunity. We uh, we were keep repeating to to stuff. This was the our um, intervention on steroids. So trying to find the best incentive, also to benchmark with the tools. That was the the, the idea for the for the first experiment to get lateral reading and other cool techniques and to benchmark with something that we think is the pow most powerful things we can do in prolific. And um, now in the following months, we are planning to do some, some research with students in school. And it will be super interesting to see if, if this incentives component uh, replicated. And just another short thing I wanna say that even with a uh, prosociality, we try to uh, you know, to include this very prolific specific uh, component, uh, you know, because you know that prolific participants are our live community, they share concerns in chat and stuff. So we thought if we ask them, what if you help another person? And that's why Folko is so disappointed <laughs> why uh, we haven't found an effect for that, uh, for that type of manipulation. But thank you, it's, it's a very relevant question. Yeah, I look forward to seeing that other study with uh, the kids. That sounds like a great end of the to totally opposite end type of approach. Great work. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Esther. I just want to mention one thing and then I'll leave uh, whoever raised their hands. Uh, that, that kind of raised up, uh, was raised on the, in the chat. I actually didn't mention this explicitly, uh, but um, what I was presenting was actually a correlation and evidence that lateral reading actually increases performance. It wasn't our manipulation. Our manipulation was actually to provide participants with like a, a pop-up window, which actually listed the strategies. Now to present is one thing, to actually follow the strategies is another. So strategies themselves are quite effective, but most people just neglect them. So that's why in the paper, we do actually report uh, intention to treat rather than the actual effect of the techniques. So 
the actual amount of people who do follow techniques is kind of around 20%, which isn't that many. Uh, but still, we do see an increase through the informational intervention that is the pop-up. Yes. Um, please. Um, it so happens that one of our PC students also did a study that's somewhere in the second round of review using monetary incentives, uh, but with political, mm -hmm. true and false political headlines. And the finding from that was basically it worked pretty much, meaning people's accuracy overall improved when you pay them, right? But uh, the effect was quite narrow in the sense that this was a US sample and the only thing that we really found was Republicans were more likely to accurately identify real news. There was no change in false news. It mm, mm, didn't matter mm. whatsoever. Democrats didn't really change on anything, meaning they were already pretty much correct. Yeah. Whereas Republicans were basically more likely to say, okay, fine, I guess CNN is real. <laughs> pretty much, right? Like that's sort of the implication. That's, that's a huge uh, admittance, though. So. Yeah, I mean, if I give them money to say that, I mean, Right. 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 I was wondering what you, if, if that's, if, yeah. if you find something similar, maybe, or okay. So I guess we're kind of dealing with a different population and different kind of content, and that might have kind of changed the kind of scenario and responses that we observed, because in fact we did not find much uh, difference between true and false content in terms of like, how much performance increased. Uh, but I believe this is mostly because the kind of content we were showing didn't uh, involve any, I mean, of course, climate change is quite controversial in the US, but and, and UK, of course, still has uh, like, like, a, it's like a meaningful portion of people still deny the effects of climate change. But uh, we believe that kind of content we kind of displayed did provide for uh, less uh, uh, polarized kind of information compared to political facts. And uh, that's one thing. And again, we also observe that uh, if we probably, that's also an interesting point. If we were to run this in the US, probably observe and witness very different things because of the kind of, uh, the way also scientific misinformation spreads depends on the sort of uh, uh, political and economic agents that actually purport it, at least part of scientific misinformation. And uh, there's a lot of lobbying in the US specifically, which means also this kind of, uh, uh, of, of kind of disinformation might as well be affected by political leaning in, uh, in, the, in the United States. So we'll have to figure. Yeah, I think if I can intervene, one key issue is the, the site that we work only on science related information. Yeah. So actually, the way that we established validity was um, a bit complex in the sense that we had independent um, verification of the content using multiple criteria, for example, is the research. So is the content present in any uh, research outlets, um, are there biases, uh, and so on and so forth. So there's a number of criteria that we went through. So it's not as simple as, you know, you have a piece of political news and you just try to figure out, well, this is just baloney. It's, it's, it's not true, but um, it, it's rather more complex. So that's why we, we think that um, actually, when you give incentives and then people really try to you know, apply themselves and that they try to find um, some substance to, to what yeah. they read. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do... any, yes, please. What were your uh, thoughts about the finding with the self image? So, where you, where you go ah, yeah. It? Okay. So, I mean, we are. Uh, Kind of really preliminary results. So, but uh, the idea behind this is that there's a there's a strong intrinsic uh, incentive to prove yourself like uh, somehow worthy to the challenge, right? And uh, clarify, this is something actually. The, the, what, what was the what was the treatment there? What did they what did they, they had to do this task? Yeah, they basically had to evaluate the task and rate it on a scale from one to six. And, That's it. And the variable is how well we did or should? Yes, they basically, well, we basically took their responses and kind of reversed it if they were like face false posts. 
it, uh, just and then we just took their score. Is there some correlation between that and sort of some innate wanting to be to cognitively challenge yourself, and that's going that's, to lead to yeah, that's to, something we haven't uh, we haven't tested. We we thought about social comparison scales, but that's actually a need for cognition. Would have done the work here, mm -hmm. yeah. But we do have other measures of, uh, you know, like uh, a willingness to engage with the topics. So like how much they're, like we ask them explicitly, would you be willing or interested in knowing more about the topic? So we might look into that and see if that kind of predicts that that's a very good, uh, interesting point. But the idea here about like uh, self-image perhaps is like, no, this is, so these kind of challenges are used a lot, for instance, in social engineering, you know, for, uh, actually taking your data and, uh, and accessing your own private uh, profiles. Uh, and these are quite successful in a way that people interact with these posts without knowing uh, what they are about and they maybe provide uh, a lot of personal information. So we thought if these are so successful for hacking people, then what about using them to actually do for something good, right? We'll see, we'll see. Okay. Um...